Catholic Church family. Catherine and I are bringing the communion at home message this week. So I just want to share a short testimony around Isaiah 53 and verses 3 to 5. Verse 3 says, He is despised and rejected by me. And this is what I want you to hear. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. You know, many years ago now, I guess it is, Ian and I were in Honiara. We'd gone over there as missionaries. And our two kids were back here in Australia and they were about 19 and 17 at the time, I think. And I found that really, really hard to leave the kids at home. And so for the first probably, well, I, it must have been getting into months. I was grieving. I was missing them terribly, really, really missing them and, and grieving for them. And then one day, the Lord spoke to me out of, let me read this to you, Jeremiah 31, 15 to 16, the beginning of 16, and this is what it says. Now, I'm not, I'm not giving you a theologic, theological perspective of this scripture. I'm just saying that the Holy Spirit quickened these verses to me that spoke to my heart. It's Jeremiah 31, 15, 16a. A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel was weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they are no more. Refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work will be rewarded, says the Lord. So I clearly understood that God was saying to me, enough is enough. The crying's gone on long enough. I've heard your voice, I know, and I understand the pain that enough is enough. And very soon after that, we were attending an outdoor meeting um, and there must have been 3,000 Solomon Islanders. If you've ever heard the island people um, singing together, it's absolutely beautiful. And they were singing, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. Surely he bore our sorrows and by his stripes we are healed. And it was as we sang those words, surely he bore our sorrows that the Holy Spirit anointed the truth of those words to my heart and I was able to um, be comforted by the truth of God's word and by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the healing process began and I was able to move on because I believe that I was probably stuck in a grieving process and it was the intervention of the Holy Spirit that moved me on by the truth of the word of God, that surely he bore our sorrow. So many times we focus on scripture and you know, the scripture does say that Jesus took, and I've read that to you tonight, that Jesus took the punishment for our sin. And yes, through Jesus' death and sacrifice on the cross, we are forgiven and we're restored in relationship with Jesus Christ. And yes, by his stripes we are healed. But our emotional pain, our sorrows and our grief are also included in that healing process. So sometimes as we look at the scriptures, we, we overlook, as I did then, overlook the truth of God's word that surely he bore my sorrows. And I was refusing to be comforted and do I own up to it? Probably having a pity party about the pain and the sorrow and the sacrifice.
sacrifice I felt that I was making until God said to me, enough is enough. And I took my pain or I allowed the um, love of Jesus to touch my heart and to begin that healing process so that I could get on with what we were called there to do. So I wonder tonight, as um, those of you that are watching this video clip, if there's anybody that's watching that might be stuck in pain, hanging on to their pain, or even having a little pity party about their experience in life and thinking that perhaps it's worse than what anybody else has ever experienced. But that's not true. And whether it is or whether it's not, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is our all in all. He accomplished it all there on the cross for us. And we want to be people that um, learn more and more what that means for us in our lives today. And if you're, you're someone that's experiencing pain, the pain of loss of any kind, the grief of any kind, the pain of rejection, the pain of being hurt, the pain of being offended and slighted, Jesus is the answer. And I promise you that that healing, that the beginning of that healing process is available to you right now should you invite Jesus. Believing the word that surely he bore our sorrows and by his stripes we are healed. So Catherine and I are going to take communion and... Um, Let's pray. So Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. We ask forgiveness for our... Lord, sometimes we're so obtuse when we know your word and we know it well and yet we fail to apply it to our lives and we say we're so sorry because of all that you went through, that you suffered and sacrificed on that cross that we might know what it is to live in wholeness and in freedom. So we ask forgiveness for not applying the truth of your word to our lives. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you were willing for your body to be broken on that cross, that we might be healed, whether it's physical healing, whether it's deliverance, or whether it's emotional healing. But we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have the answer that you are the one that brings healing to our lives. Let's just eat, Catherine. And Lord, we thank you too that you were so willing to shed your blood. So often as we get stuck in our pain and in our self-pity, that we forget that your promise was that you came to give us life and life in abundance. And as you shed your life-giving blood, that that life in abundance was poured out to us. And so we just thank you, Lord, for your shed blood. And we thank you, Lord, that we can apply it in every area of our lives. Amen. And God bless you.